What's up YouTube? In this video, we're gonna be building sort of this horizontal accordion section, kind of functions like a tabs or accordion component. This question came up um, sort of in our Webflow Wizards Slack channel, and I figured this live stream would be a good time today to try and address it. So thanks to everyone for joining in, uh, whatever time it is for you today. Let's go ahead and just get started. So I'm gonna create a div inside this main wrapper give it the class of tab. And this is gonna be a width of 100%, a height of 100 VH, so it covers the full screen. I'll even set it to position relative. Now inside that, I'm gonna have a div, actually let's make this a link block, and let's give it the class of tab uh, link. So this will be, um, we won't apply any sort of fixed width on this, we'll just give it some padding instead. And let's go ahead and give it a, border, maybe two pixels on the side. And then we'll have another div right next to it called tab content. So from there, what we're gonna do is apply Flexbox and we want them to all stretch to be the same height, justify towards the left. And inside of the tab link, let's also add sort of a heading or actually I'll just add in a paragraph element here. And let's call this tab link title. So we want this, let me go ahead and label it something like first tab uh, content. We want this to be sort of like a vertical. Um, so what we're gonna do here is copy this sort of text orientation CSS. So this is uh, able to make our text vertical instead of just rotating it. Um, so if we basically paste this in here, we want to first of all target our class of tab link title. And let's go ahead and open up some brackets. And inside here, this is where we'll paste in the CSS. And you'll notice it just changes this tab link to vertical um, to sort of match this one here. And then we can also apply flex to the tab link and I'm gonna anchor it towards the bottom and that should be fine there. And inside the tab content, I'm going to add in a div and call it something like tab contain. And what we're going to do is select the tab content for now and we'll flex to center. And let's just set this content to take up 100% the space of the available width. And inside the uh, contain, let's add in maybe a heading element. We'll make this sort of an H2. And let's add in some paragraph text. So I'm going to label this something like tab content uh, one or tab content heading. Let's say first tab content heading. And let's give this somewhat of a width. I may set 30 EM or something like that. But yeah, let's give it a size like so. And that appears to be working so far. So what we're gonna do is try and decrease the width. So we'll be animating the width of this tab content uh, from 0% to 100%, which means it needs to be set to overflow hidden. And that way it kind of crops off the stuff inside and then we'll animate it up to 100% like so. Now it's kind of shrinking the tab content like that. So what we're gonna do, because we don't want it to squish the width of that element like so, um, we're going to add another div inside and let's just give this one the class of tab uh, content wrap. And um, let's go ahead and give it position absolute to cover its full parent, which is this tab content, which is relative. We'll put the container inside the wrap and then we'll flex the wrap instead. And we'll also give the wrapper a bit of padding um, so that way it doesn't, the text doesn't touch the edge. And now we should be able to uh, uh, decrease the width of this. Let's see, it's still shrinking the content wrap. I may need to give it also a min width of 46M. There we go. Um, so this should do it to where that content sort of just gets cropped instead of wrapping. Um, so 0% width by default. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and copy this tab link like so. And we're gonna duplicate it and make another one here. And then we'll duplicate the content div, put another one under there. 
And let's do this a couple times. So we'll have maybe four links. Um, so we'll just duplicate that here. Duplicate this one. And duplicate this one here. All right, so we have our links there. And what we want is only one of them to be open by default. So I'm going to give this one a combo class of active. And I'll just use that to maybe change the background color here. And I'll give this tab content a combo class of active as well. Um, and this one would have the width of 100%. That way we're only seeing one of them at first. And for the active one, I'm also going to maybe select the maybe select it and give it some two pixel border on the side. So that way it doesn't run into the next link there. And let's go ahead and give our tab link a background color of sort of this light color here. Let's give our tab content, not just the active one, but all of them, this uh, darker background color or that one right there. Okay. So that basically sets that part up. I think I'm going to just quickly change out some of these titles. So we'll say second. Uh, tab content, um, we'll say third here, and we'll say fourth here. Yeah, cool. And let me just uh, switch on these classes of active on these real quick. And I'll remove the class of active from this one so we can switch out those titles. Cool. And let's do the same for the next one. Switch out this title to be third. And remove the class from this. Switch out this one as well. Cool. All right, so we have that basically set up. I think all we need to do now is start working on the interaction part. Uh, hey, Kevin, thanks so much for joining in. Hey, Eric, great to have you this morning. Um, let's see. We're going to set up a transition, and we're going to apply it to all properties for now. Uh, this will just be the speed at which we want um, everything to animate. So 400 milliseconds is fine. And on we actually want to apply that to not just the combo class one, but to all of them. Transition, all properties, 400 milliseconds. And let's do the same for this tab link. I think the only thing we're going to be animating here is sort of the background color. So I'll apply a transition to that one as well. Okay, um, so then from there, we just can add in our custom code to sort of switch out the classes. This part should be pretty easy. Anytime we click on any tab link, we'll head over to our jQuery Builder. One click of a tab link, we want to grab every tab link that's on the page. And we also want to grab every tab content div that's on the page. So we'll chain the classes like this. And we want to remove the class of active from those elements. So if I click on this third tab link here, it's going to remove the class of active from this one and also from this element here. Then we want to add it on to the correct elements. So if I clicked on this third one here, I'm going to create sort of a new step here. And I want to get the tab link that I clicked on and I want to add a class to that link of active. So then I'll create one more step here because we also want to add the class of active to the correct tab content div there. Um, so to do that, what we can do is get the element we clicked on again. So we clicked on, let's say this third tab link. Then we just want to traverse to the next element on the page. So in that case, it's always going to be the related uh, tab content element. It's the element coming right after the link we clicked on. And then we just want to add a class to that one of active. So we can basically copy this and we'll head over to sort of our page settings here. We'll create sort of a script here, like so, and we'll paste it in there. Let's save, and let's publish it, and let's try it out. So we open up the site here, we click on a tab link, and it's revealing sort of the correct tab content. Based on the link we clicked on, it's also giving this the active class, um, the active tab content. So that's looking pretty good there. I think our next step is just to make this mobile responsive. 
Um, I'm actually going to reduce a little bit of padding inside here. Okay. So here, I think I'm going to make this a bit smaller um, just so it fits within like the smallest version we have. So that should work good for tablet. I'm not going to change anything there. Um, but here we need to start switching the direction of everything. So I'm going to switch this to display block instead. Um, actually, we'll keep it flex, but we'll switch it to vertical and align it to the top. So that looks good. We don't need these to be stacking like that anymore. So what I'm going to do is create a media query. And let's see, this the widest version of this breakpoint is 767. means the smallest one here is 768. Um, so what we're going to do is the CSS we have that's causing our text to be sort of vertical, we're just going to put it inside a media query that says only run this CSS on screen sizes at seven, six, eight or larger. Um, so that on this breakpoint, our text is vertical and here it switches back to horizontal. We also don't need the active or the border anymore on the side of this. We'll switch it to the bottom. And then for the tab content divs, we're going to set them all to a width of 100% but a height of 0%. And then we don't need, or for this one, sorry, this tab content, it's going to be a height of 100%, the active one, so that it does that. Um, and this active tab link will not get a side border anymore. It'll get the bottom border. Let's see, I still feel like the borders aren't quite correct. So let's see, tab link, there we go bottom borders for those, not side. Okay, so that's working well. And then for this, honestly, now since we're not animating the width, we can we don't need a min width. Um, I wonder if I can just type none. No, it has to be auto. But we will have a max width of 100%. So that way, it when the screen gets smaller, the text starts to wrap. Um, but that is our ideal width there. So that's working good. And then here it should just animate the height basically of the element. And when we reduce the height of the parent, it's just going to be cropping it off like so. Um, so the, the active one will be 100% height. Um, so let's go ahead and publish this and we'll try it out one more time, this time on the mobile version. So I'm going to inspect here and I'll head over here and let's switch. Uh, I'll need to refresh the page switch it over to mobile. wonder if I can zoom this up a little bit. Uh, 75. There we go. All right. So now any tab content we click on, it's going to sort of animate that, um, the height of it like so. And we can navigate between tabs like that. And so we have mobile working. And I think the great thing too, is if we are on a certain tab and we switch breakpoints, that tab is still going to be active. So It'll just sort of remember whichever one was active last. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it up. I think that covers everything for this interaction. I left the link to the clonable in the description of this video if you'd like to check that out. Also left the link to the live site in there as well if you'd like to check out the original website here. Um, so yeah, that wraps up this live stream. Thanks so much for joining and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.